Seven Case at Twelve. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A gunman still on the loose this morning after a shooting leaves two people dead. We will have the latest. With Democrats' push for new witnesses intensifying, President Trump is remaining defiant. I'm Elizabeth Hur in Washington with the latest on the impeachment showdown coming up. And it's a cold morning, 41 degrees, but it's clear. I can see the tower today. I know Friday we had trouble seeing it, so now we can see it today. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for your Monday morning. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 20th, MLK Day. It's very brisk out there. Spurs got a big win over the Miami Heat, which is kind of redemption for losing in Miami the other day. Yes, we're happy about that. We have a lot going on this morning. And, of course, the big march today among the largest in the entire nation. Mike is here. On this MLK day, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, this morning's going to be chilly, but uh, fantastic. You know, there was some concern there could be a couple of showers. That was last week coming in today, but no, it's going to be really nice for it. just a few extra clouds later on in the afternoon. And temperatures right now are pretty much normal of where we should be. And there is the, I don't know if the camera's a little out of focus, but that is the waning crescent moon. It is on its way to becoming the new moon, which will be on the, uh, the 24th. Now, as far as temperatures, yeah, we've got some freezing readings out there in Comfort, Kerrville, Bernie at uh, 32 degrees, 41 at the airport. Clear skies, very dry air, light wind, so we're going to continue to drop down. Mold and mountain cedar are are both on the high side and after all the wind yesterday I'm wondering if Mount Cedar is going to continue to go up mold should be dropping down a little bit given the fact we do have very very low humidity but then that's going to start to uh, come back into the picture and that's going to bring some rain chances with it but today we have mostly uh, clear skies right now mostly sunny first part of the day and throughout the morning hours temperatures are going to be uh, below normal so we're only going to be in about the mid to upper 50s so uh, yeah maybe still jacket weather and a few more clouds later on this afternoon but again a really really nice day just a very brisk and bracing sort of a morning now we do have some good rain chances by midweek we'll talk about that and never too soon to look ahead to the upcoming weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning to you, Mike. And good morning, everyone at home. And uh, we're off again for those folks that uh, do have to work today. Another venture out there on the roadways. Now, we do have some areas where we do have some construction. Look at these flashing lights here. 37 at I-10, so watch out in areas like this. Also, Highway 151 at 410. So, as we move around to various areas, we also know that we have some construction up there on 1604. If you're eastbound on 1604, right about O'Connor, things start to uh, taper off and shut down. As you see here, here's some additional lights. 35, 1604 at the Cloverleaf. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. Seven people shot at a bar near downtown. Now two of them are dead and the gunman is still on the run. San Antonio police say multiple gunshots were fired inside Ventura Bar just after eight last night. Now the bar is off Avenue B and East Jones. Chief William McManus tells us this happened during a concert at Ventura when two people got into an argument. That argument escalated when one person began to fire off a gun. Now we are told two people died from their injuries. One and died inside the club. They are working on a suspect description right now. I'm confident that we will identify the individual and have that person in custody sooner than later. And police say they're not sure if it was a targeted shooting, but the victims were patrons. No one that works at the bar was shot or hurt. We're going to have more in a live report coming up at 5 a.m. In your other morning headlines now to the impeachment of President Donald Trump. His trial set to resume tomorrow in the U.S. Senate. The president and his legal team have until noon today to file a trial brief. ABC's Elizabeth Herr is in Washington with the latest. President Trump in Texas touting his achievements. We're achieving what no administration has ever achieved before. And blasting Democrats. And what do I get out of it? Tell me. I get impeached. That's what I get out of it. <laughs> By these radical left lunatics, I get impeached. This as That's his lawyers okay, filed the president's first formal response ahead of his trial in the Senate. In a six-page letter calling the House impeachment effort a poisonous partisanship and a lawless process. Former Harvard Law professor Alan Dershowitz joining the president's defense team and arguing that abuse of power is not grounds for impeachment. 
Half of American presidents have been accused by the political enemies of abusing their power. The framers didn't want to have that kind of criteria in the Constitution because it weaponizes uh, uh, impeachment for partisan purposes. The abuse of power is at the center of what the framers intended an impeachable offense to be. Another major sticking point at the start of the trial, witnesses, with Senate Republicans planning to postpone addressing the issue until after House managers present their case and the president responds, as was done in the Clinton impeachment. They're Senator Lindsey Graham on Fox the News. President. They could have been called in the House. They chose not to. That's a dodge. We are going to demand votes, yes or no, up or down. And with that fight over new witnesses continuing, President Trump is scheduled to be in Davos, Switzerland, tomorrow and Wednesday for meetings at the World Economic Forum. Elizabeth Hur, ABC News, Washington. And at least two people are dead and 15 people injured after a shooting in Kansas City. Officers arrived to a chaotic scene outside of a crowded bar where they say one adult, female, was shot and killed in the parking lot. Now up to 15 people were self-transported to area hospitals and three of them are currently in critical condition. The shooter is also dead after an armed security guard from the bar stopped him. And no shots were fired by any officers. Police say they do not know why the suspect did this. Two police officers dead after a shooting Sunday near Hawaii, one of Hawaii's most scenic spots, Diamond Head. Several homes also set on fire. The incident unfolding at a home near Honolulu tourist destination where authorities were responding to a domestic violence call. Honolulu police responded reports of a woman who was stabbed in Waikiki when the officers arrived on scene under fire from that suspect who is now among the missing. 436, 41 degrees on your Monday morning. And still ahead, San Antonio Spurs back in the wind column as they head to Phoenix to take on the Suns. We're going to have a preview and highlights from their win against the Heat. And next, we now know who's headed to Super Bowl 54 following the AFC and NFC title games over the weekend. We have a recap next. And taking a look outside with live cam, a cold 41 degrees. So if you are headed to the MLK Junior March, definitely pack your coat or jacket. We'll be right back. Four thirty-nine. we now know who's going to Super Bowl 54 in Miami. It'll be the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Francisco 49ers in two weeks to decide who takes home the Lombardi Trophy in Florida. But before that could happen, we had to get through Championship Sunday. Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners taking on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in the NFC Championship at Levi Stadium. San Francisco has gone on a surprising journey from the number two pick in the draft to one of the last two teams standing. Journeyman Raheem Mostert rushed for 222 yards and four touchdowns to make quarterback Garoppolo mostly a spectator. Only complete, completed six passes in the game for 77 yards. Nick Bosa harassed Aaron Rodgers from the start, and the Niners go on to beat Green Bay 37-20 for the NFC Championship. Earlier in the day, Sunday, AFC title game, Patrick Mahomes firing up the crowd at Arrowhead as the second-seeded Chiefs hosted the sixth-seeded Tysons, Titans. rather. Uh, Tennessee up early. They tack on a touchdown, making it 10 0 in the first quarter. Chiefs would fight back. Patrick Mahomes eventually passed for nearly 300 yards and three touchdowns and led KC to a 35 24 victory over the Titans. That sends the Chiefs to their first Super Bowl since 1970. Spurs hosting the Heat Sunday afternoon, trying to get back in the win column after losing two in a row. Spurs down one after, we're, we're down rather after one, but Patty Mills provided a late spark with 18 points. LaMarcus Aldridge scored 21 to give the Spurs a much needed win. 107-102, DeMar DeRozan also in double digits with 20 points. Spurs now hit the road for Phoenix where they'll play the Suns tonight at... 8 o'clock. So all in all, pretty good weekend sports-wise. Yeah, that's not too bad. Some fun games to watch yesterday. I'm, I'm glad the Spurs came back. Me too. Very yeah, good. we were hoping that they'd bounce back again after losing mm -hmm. in Miami right. just the other night. 441, 41 degrees. And the Oscar-nominated film 1917 still fighting its way towards the top of the box office. We're going to take what other movies brought in. Some big numbers this weekend. The next three major airports on alert for a deadly virus. We have more on the travel warning straight ahead in your GMA First Look. And welcome back. It is 444. So three airports in the U.S. are screening passengers amid growing fears about a new virus spreading in China. 
ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, three major airports on alert for a deadly virus. They told us to stay in the plane for like a couple more minutes, and then we went down to take the temperature and I gave them the form. Here in America, the CDC sending about 100 employees to JFK, LAX, and SFO to take temperatures and check for symptoms of the coronavirus, which can at first look like the common cold, flu, or even pneumonia. After Chinese health officials reveal they've identified more than 200 cases of the so-called coronavirus that has already killed three people in Asia, at least eight are are hospitalized in serious condition. I think it could probably possibly easily spread. There are a lot of people going back and forth, especially with Chinese New Year. So how dangerous is this virus? Coming up at 7 a.m., our Dr. Jennifer Ashton is live in Times Square with everything you need to know. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, thousands of students will show their animals at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Junior Livestock Auction. It's just a couple of weeks after countless hours of feeding, exercising, and cleaning their animals. Less than 10% of contestants will make a sale of their livestock. It's a lot of hard work. Those sales are crucial for scholarship money for students raising animals. Our Sarah Costa spoke with a nonprofit wildfire that raises money to directly benefit those in the Junior Livestock Auction. The group Wildfire started as just a couple of friends who bought a spot at the San Antonio Rodeo barbecue cook-off to raise money for students competing in the livestock show. Now it's a full functioning nonprofit that raises twenty to forty thousand dollars a year through its barbecue cook-off entertainment event, being able to sponsor many students. Jesse Pickett started Wildfire two years ago and says he is proud to be able to help out students who work so hard all year long. I was invited to go to the auction years ago and I just saw all the support and all the love in that, bu in that building and uh, decided that we needed to be a part of that. It's something they have to do every morning. Uh, there's no choice. Uh, you know, all of us in life, we got to do things because they have to get done. Okay, so uh, these kids have to get up early, they have to, they have to stay late. Um, and again, it's a work ethic thing. A work ethic is instilled in these guys at a very, very early age that carries them through their high school years, through their college years, and then to the professional years. Pickett says now the organization has a golf and fishing tournament to raise money on top of its biggest fundraiser, the barbecue cook-off event, which is three nights of entertainment with seven acts, including Cody Canada, Wade Bowen, and Bill Ayers Band. Tickets range anywhere from $100 to $2,500. Even if you can't attend that event and you just want to donate, you can visit their website at wildfiretx.org slash donate. And you can find all of this information right now on KSAT.com. Coming up on GMSA, hear from some of the students who were supported by that nonprofit, Wildfire. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Monday morning time check, 447. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Marcus Trujillo. And right now, as we excuse me, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, those flashing areas where we had some flashing lights uh, from construction over the weekend, those areas are clearing up. That's 35, 6, and 04. You can see the uh, overpass there as well as the cloverleaf now back open uh, regular business there in both directions. Highway 90 in Nogalitos, no issues there. And take a look at Highway 151 at 410. So we are expecting a little bit lighter traffic than normal today for your morning commute. So. Uh, just once you've head out there, though, don't forget to watch that speed as you head out. That can tend to get away from you when you don't have a lot of obstructions to slow you down. Right now, 35 there at O'Connor, north and southbound lanes, still running smoothly. No obstructions, no delays right now in anyone's travel times. Thank you, Marcus. Boy, did it cool down fast last night. Yeah, it's very cool. We had a lot of clear skies and then the very dry air because um, yesterday dew points are down in the teens, which means there's hardly any moisture in the atmosphere and uh, light wind. And so it's a very chilly morning. We're down to about normal and it's going to be a pretty nice looking day. We're going to have a couple of clouds, especially later on. And we do have some rain chances later on this week as well. So that's encouraging. This was from a couple of days ago and uh, some of the clouds that we're still hanging on in here. Now we just have a couple of them, but as you can see, we do have uh, uh, there's the moon behind a few clouds uh, hanging around out here, but then uh, it is the 
the waning crescent moon, so it's getting getting smaller as it heads towards the new moon phase. No problem with visibility anywhere, so we're not going to be dealing with that. We're just dealing with cold temperatures freezing out in portions of the uh, hill country. Uh, Rio Medina 33, Hondo 33, which means around your backyard it actually could be freezing. And I think we're going to be dropping down another uh, well, handful of degrees in the next couple of hours just because we do have still mostly clear skies, light wind, and that uh, dry air with these dew points down uh, still in the 20s. And humidity is going to remain low throughout the rest of today. A couple of extra clouds later on. The wind eventually is going to start to shift around a bit more out of the east to southeast. Still, by tomorrow morning, it's going to be pretty nice. We'll have a couple of clouds hanging around here. Then throughout the day, the humidity really starts to work its way back in here, and we'll see a lot more clouds tomorrow and into Wednesday. And tomorrow night, we may actually have a couple of showers out there. Nothing going on today, and then the increasing clouds uh, by later on in the afternoon tomorrow, and then by, like I said, tomorrow evening, maybe even a couple of uh, showers moving on in here, and that's going to be the case by Wednesday morning, and that will continue throughout most of the day on Wednesday and start to move on out of here. Looks like by the evening, hours, perhaps a leftover sprinkler or two off to the east by Thursday. Rainfall totals, uh, it's not going to be a huge, huge rain event, but this computer model, by the time it's all said and done, has about uh, right along the I-35 corridor, maybe an inch of rain, obviously some localized heavier amounts than that, and the heaviest rain is going to be down here along the coast. So east, southeastern half of our area uh, has the potential of seeing some nice, nice rain. We're almost at uh, at normal right now, just a, maybe a quarter of an inch behind normal up to this point so far this year as far as rain is concerned. 54 degrees today at noon. We're going to have mostly sunny skies. A few more clouds later on this afternoon. 58, so we will be a little bit below normal as far as high temperatures today. Partly cloudy skies. And the clouds are definitely going to be increasing tomorrow. Still 58 degrees, so we start off not quite as cold. Still on the chilly side tomorrow morning. Then with those extra clouds around here, it stays milder Wednesday morning. We are going to have a lot more in the way of uh, showers around here on Wednesday and then going into and those the wording on that. Look at the pictures, not the words on <laughs> that seven day <laughs> and because we do have mostly sunny skies then on Saturday and um, a few more clouds by Sunday, but the rainiest day is going to be on Wednesday. I don't I don't see a Problem. I think you're okay, aren't you? No, it says showers on Saturday. It's going to be mostly sunny on Saturday. Oh, so. that part. Oh, okay. Well, all right. You, you still the see words, the sun. The words didn't right. change on there, so. Yeah, sunny so. showers. <laughs> we look forward to the weekend always, though. Thank yeah. you, Mike. <laughs> 452, 41 degrees. And did you get to see any movies over the weekend? We're going to tell you which ones were at the top of the box office. That's coming up next. Couple new movies raking in some big money at the box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Daria Albinger. Bad Boys for Life took the top spot at the box office this weekend. I'm done, Mike. Bringing in an estimated $68.1 million, the third installment in the Bad Boys franchise coming after the two previous films from 1995 and 2003 that earned more than $400 million. In second place, Doolittle, starring Robert Downey Jr. as a doctor who can talk to the animals. The film took a beating from critics but managed to pull in $30 million at the box office. And rounding out the top three, 1917, which has 10 Oscar nominations. It earned another $27 million over the weekend, bringing its box office total to $140 million. Kim Kardashian West is a step closer to becoming a lawyer, having finished her first year of study as an apprentice. She's also busy promoting Kim Kardashian West, The Justice Project. The 39-year-old reality star has been advocating for the release of prisoners and believes that some laws need to be changed. The two-hour documentary airs April 5th on Oxygen. The estranged father of Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, is apparently disappointed by his daughter and her husband's decision to step back from the royal family. This is like one of the greatest long, long living institutions ever. They're destroying it. They're, they're cheapening it. They're, they're making it shabby. Thomas Markle making the comments in a documentary film for the UK's Channel 5 amid a legal battle involving him, the Duchess, and a UK tabloid, The Mail on Sunday. It is, but you're and happy birthday, Bill Maher, the comedian and talk show host, is celebrating his 64th birthday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Daria Albinger, ABC News. About three till right now.
still ahead, Sarah Acosta is standing by with a live update on that shooting that left two people dead at Ventura Bar. And some baby strollers sold at Target and Amazon being recalled. We will tell you which ones and why. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And now five, seven people shot two dead after a shooting at a San Antonio area bar. Now police are still looking for a suspect. And San Antonio, along with the rest of the nation, pausing to remember the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. And outside with Live Cam, we will get a March forecast with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Hope you had a great weekend. Good morning to you. It is MLK Day Monday. It is January 20th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, chilly 39 degrees now. It dropped a degree from about half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, we got away from morning lows in the, say, 60s, near 70 degrees. Much more feeling like uh, January out there, Mike. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's just how it's supposed to feel and then some. But uh, if you do have to uh, head off to uh, work this morning, make sure you bundle up heading off to the March. Also bundle up and it's going to stay on the cool side throughout uh, most all of the morning. We'll only make it up to maybe about the uh, low to mid 50s by noon. 39 degrees here in town. So clear skies, light wind, dry air. That's why we've dropped down a new, few more degrees and we'll continue to drop down a couple of more degrees um, before it's all said and done when the sun starts to come up and warm us up and no wind to speak of. So that's why. Uh, one of the three ingredients, dry air, clear skies, and light wind, why we are cooling down nicely. Temperatures around the area we do some freezing readings out in parts of the uh, hill country right now. 32 Comfort, Bandera, below freezing in Kerrville, and say Hondo, for instance, at 33. That means in and around your house may actually be freezing, and 38 at Randolph. Mold and Mountain Seed are both on the high side. With the dry air, I would suspect uh, mold is going to be dropping down a little bit. Mountain Cedar, though, it was still fairly breezy yesterday, so we'll. Uh, get that update just about seven o'clock this morning. And as far as the rest of today, mostly clear, cold this morning, partly cloudy, a couple of extra clouds later on, but still a nice looking day. Uh, mid to upper 50s for high temperatures, so just a little bit below normal. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to see the clouds increase. And then Wednesday we do have showers and storms. Pretty good shot at some rain actually starting late tomorrow night and into Wednesday mid 50s. And then Thursday through the weekend, Looks pretty darn nice, mostly sunny and just about normal temperatures. So mid or so 60s and right around, <clears throat> excuse me, right around low 40s for low temperatures. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on? Well, right now, Mike, things look pretty good out there on the roadways. Not too many vehicles and right now no delays uh, that we can see. Everything traveling at at least the normal speed, some just a little bit quicker. Highway 90 at Nogalitos, you can see no issues there all the way through. Highway 90 at Joe McMillan, both directions, eastbound and westbound lanes, moving along nicely. And then 21 at Winding Way, no more flashing lights. And up there, uh, you can see 35 at Evans. North and southbound lanes currently running smoothly right now. Mark? Developing now, this morning two people are dead, five injured in a shooting Sunday evening at a concert at a downtown bar. The fatal shooting happening at Ventura in the 1000 block of Avenue B. Our Sarah Costa is live near the location with what we know as of this morning. Sarah? Good morning, Mark, and we are outside that bar where you said, you know, two people were killed from that shooting and five others injured. It is quiet now outside this bar, but the San Antonio Police Department, they continue their investigation as they continue to search for that shooter, their suspect responsible for those two that died and the five others that were shot last night. San Antonio police say the shooting happened just around eight o'clock at the Ventura Bar, which is on the thousand block of Avenue B, just north of downtown. An argument broke out inside the bar between a group of individuals and one person pulled out a gun and started shooting. That's according to the police chief, William McManus, and a concert was also going on when the shooting happened. One of the victims killed was a 21 year old male who was found dead inside the club. The other victim died outside of the bar from critical injuries. Police say they are unsure if it was a targeted shooting but the victims were patrons of that bar and concert that was going on. No one that worked at the bar was shot at or injured, Police Chief McManus said. Now, our crews did speak with a witness who was inside Ventura when that shooting happened. He said he heard multiple shots fired, and he also describes that shooting. He said he didn't get a good look at the shooter, but he did say he saw the back of him and he was wearing a pink backpack. 
live from North downtown. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A man listed as an active blood gang member on the Texas Anti-Gang Task Force is now in the Bear County Jail. 25-year-old Xavier Johnson was arrested on aggravated robbery charges. Now, he was one of the most wanted gang members in Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Habitual Offenders Team worked with the Lone Star Fugitive Task Force to arrest Johnson in the 500 block of Sunrise Canyon. They say he and three other suspects robbed two grocery truck drivers. Now, deputies then discovered Johnson had additional felony warrants. This is the third time Johnson has been arrested in the last eight months. Back in June, on two counts of robbery, accused of stealing tires from a local shop. President Donald Trump's impeachment trial set to resume tomorrow in the U.S. Senate. The president and his legal team has until noon today to file a trial brief. The president's defense team argues that abuse of power is not grounds for impeachment. Meanwhile, Senate Republicans are planning to postpone addressing the issues with witnesses until after House managers present the case and the president responds. It's the same thing that he was done in the Clinton impeachment. With the fight continuing, the president is scheduled to be in Davos, Switzerland tomorrow and Wednesday for meetings at the World Economic Forum. And thousands of gun rights advocates are expected to attend a rally in Richmond, Virginia today. The governor there has declared a state of emergency amid threats of armed militia groups storming Virginia's capital ahead of the rally. The emergency order will ban all weapons, including firearms, from the capital grounds through tomorrow. Today, Americans observe a federal holiday in honor of Martin Luther King Jr., an advocate for nonviolent protests during the Civil Rights Movement. The campaign to create a federal holiday in King's honor began shortly after his assassination in 1968. President Ronald Reagan signed the holiday into law in 1983 and was first observed three years later. Of course, organizers say one of the biggest MLK marches in the country happens here in San Antonio. Every year, tens of thousands of people walk nearly three miles on the city's historic east side to take part in the decades old event. The march taking place today at 10 a.m. starts at MLK Academy and ends at Pittman Sullivan Park. And during the big march, there will be road closures. You can find those road closures on our website at kset.com, along with a lot more information on what you need to know. City offices will also be closed for today's holiday. And as far as coverage goes, KSAT's got you covered throughout the morning and through the new newscast. Right now, it's exactly 507, 39 degrees. And still ahead, a new study that shows just how much time teens are spending playing video games. And next, more on a recall regarding strollers sold at a couple of popular retailers. And taking a look outside with live cam on this MLK Junior Day, 39 degrees for now. Not expecting too much traffic. A lot of kiddos are out from school, but again, if you are headed to that march, bundle up. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 510. In your morning consumer headlines, Starbucks says it is expanding its program to put shops in less affluent areas. The coffee shop chain now plans to open or remodel 85 stores by 2025. That's mostly in rural and urban community communities, promising to hire local staff, including construction crews and artists. A recall alert for you now. Some baby strollers sold at Target and Amazon are being recalled. Company Baby Trend pulling four mini strollers from its Tango line. Officials with the Consumer Product Safety Commission say the stroller's hinge joints can release and collapse under pressure, which poses a falling hazard to children. Baby Trends says people should immediately stop using the strollers and contact them for a full refund or replacement. In America just had its best month for new home construction in 13 years. New home construction rose nearly 17 percent in December, soaring to a level not seen since before the financial crisis. Now, mortgage applications for new home purchases jumped 5 percent between November and December. The boom may not increase well into 2020. However, building permits actually fell by nearly 4 percent in December, which signals a slight downturn in the near future. Just about 512, 39 degrees. And several Hollywood actors took home some big honors from their peers at the annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. We'll run, we'll run down the winners. Do you think your child's spending uh, too much time playing video games online? You are not alone. We'll have more on what a new study is saying next. were made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. When considering another treatment, 
Ask about Zelljans XR, a once daily pill for adults with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis or active psoriatic arthritis for whom methotrexate did not work well enough. It can reduce pain, swelling, and significantly improve physical function. Zelljans can lower your ability to fight infections like TB. Don't start Zelljans if you have an infection. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zelljans for RA can increase risk of death, serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened, as have tears in the stomach or intestines, serious allergic reactions, and changes in lab results. Tell your doctor if you've been somewhere fungal infections are common, or if you've had TB, hepatitis B or C, or are prone to infections. Don't let another morning go by without asking your doctor about Zelgen's XR. Five fifteen. New study says nearly every parent thinks teens tend to spend too much time playing video games. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, nearly 90% of parents think their kids are spending too much time gaming. Yeah, according to a new poll, most parents think kids play too much and nearly half worry it gets in the way of sleep, homework, and even friendships. TikTok beat out Facebook and Instagram for the most app downloads in 2019. TikTok clocked in with more than 700 million downloads last year. Unfortunately for the video platform, WhatsApp still reigns supreme with 850 million downloads. And Instagram is making a change to its interface. The social media site is reportedly doing away with the IGTV button, the icon that launches Instagram's long form videos. A report says very few people were using the standalone app. Users will still get long form videos within their feed search tab and profiles. Well, that's some good news, IG. <laughs> Those are your tech bites. Have a great day, guys. Let's see how things are looking traffic wise with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Still looking pretty good out there. It's quiet. It's the way we like it. No incidents, no delays, no flashing lights. Like right now, as we take a look at the uh, couple of different areas right now through Transguide. You can see this is 281 at Winding Way. No problems there. Highway 151 at 410 earlier this morning. We did see some construction lights. Those have disappeared. Moving over here to 1604 at Stone Oak. Uh, no problems there. A little bit of problem with that feed, but you can see that there's plenty of room out there. More than enough room. As we move over to some other areas like 37 and I-10, there's no road there. There's not much out there. <clears throat> Excuse me, extremely dark. 35 at O'Connor still looking pretty good. And then over here, Highway 90 at 36th Street. You can see that north and south, north and or sorry, east and westbound lanes of Highway 90 are still running smoothly with no issues, which is more than I can say for my ability to speak this morning. Needs more caffeine. It's uh, it's a I Monday. Need, I need caffeine too. It's so yes. early. <laughs> I, we are right there with you. Safety in numbers, there Marcus. There we go. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're awake though. I think so. Okay, good. We'll see. <laughs> that makes Keep us posted. That makes all one the, of us. <laughs> the, I forgot to change all the wording on that seven day last half hour, so I got it yeah. fixed now. But, but that yeah. was last half hour. That's like yeah. so a year, like a year ago now. You, yeah. me, so that was just two of them left. Ancient. <laughs> <laughs> hey, overall, this week, you know, last week was on the warm side. We're going to be at or even a little bit below normal this week. We'll start to get back to kind of normal readings by the end of the week. But uh, today is definitely going to be on the cooler side, although we are starting off right about where we should be, even a little bit below that. Uh, this was a few days ago, even after damp, cool and damp, pretty sunset. Yes, indeed. And we are going to have a nice looking sunset tonight. Uh, sunrise is going to be pretty nice this morning because we do have just a few clouds out there right now. And uh, again, good visibility, so we don't have to deal with any fog anything like that and temperatures 39 now in town. Everybody with just a couple of exceptions is down into the 30s and then the freezing temperatures. So even at Port SA, you know, in your neighborhood out here on the list, it could be actually at freezing a little bit below that. And obviously that's the situation out there in parts of the hill country and you know, these numbers aren't that far from normal. Normal low temperature being right around 41 degrees. And I think we'll still drop down a couple of more notches because we do have such dry air out there with the very low dew point temperatures, clear skies, and then light wind. And as far as the humidity with these dew points, now these numbers were down in the teens yesterday, so it was really dry. We're still very, very dry down in the 20s, and that's going to remain the case through today, through the first part of the day tomorrow. 
Then we start to see the wind really pick up out of the, or as far as the moisture is concerned, really start to pump the moisture in here from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to be during the day tomorrow. So clouds will increase. We'll have a few more clouds this afternoon, but tomorrow afternoon, clouds really increase into tomorrow night, and then uh, maybe even some rain chances late tomorrow night, and especially into Wednesday. So today, not much is going to be going on out there, and then we do have those increasing clouds throughout uh, the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow night, and come into Wednesday morning, we'll have some showers, perhaps even a couple of thunderstorms around there, and that's going to go into most of the day on Wednesday. Some heavier downpours can be expected. The majority of the rain, though, is going to be here to the east and to the southeast, and that'll start to work its way out of here Thursday. And then behind that, we've got a great looking uh, weekend, actually about a four day weekend if you want to do it from Thursday all the way through uh, into Sunday. Rainfall total, these are some of the estimates going into Wednesday, and obviously this is going to be amended a little bit as we get closer, but it's pretty much, uh, say, I-35 corridor approximately and southeast of there where the majority of the rain is going to be. You won't get quite as much in portions of the hill country. Quick check, I mean, ridiculously cold temperatures up there to the north, but and obviously we're sort of on the leading edge of that, but all of that is going to be staying up there to the north. So we'll be staying about where we are right now for the next couple of days and then starting to get back up closer to normal readings by the end of the week. 54 at noon, mostly sunny skies. Good looking day. Cold start though, so take a jacket if you are heading out, especially uh, off to the marsh this morning, and then 58 for high temperature today. So we'll be about five degrees or so below normal. Same thing tomorrow, increasing clouds, especially late tomorrow into tomorrow night, some rain tomorrow night, and then into Wednesday. And it looks like pretty much uh, all day Wednesday we'll have some uh, showers around here, and then we'll see more sunshine on Thursday. Temperatures get back up into the mid 60s. And we'll stay uh, roughly mid 60s, low to mid 60s in through the weekend. So good looking uh, weekend around here. Nice to see some rain midweek and good looking today. Yeah, not too bad. Mild afternoons. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. High 21, 39 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to tell you which actors took home top honors at the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, nine, eight, nine, fireball seven. Daily four numbers, D seven, three, one, one, fireball one. Cash five, six, 14, 19, 27, 33. And your lot of Texas numbers, 17, 20, 27, 33, 35, 45. And your Powerball numbers, 20, 24, 38, 56, 68. Powerball 18, power play two, good luck. By 24, the Oscars may be Hollywood's biggest night, but the most meaningful night for many actors may be the Screen Actors Guild Awards. And that's where the only people voting are their peers. CNN's David Daniel has the big winners at the 26th annual SAG Awards. Thank you, Screen Actors Guild. Thank you, actors. It's not unusual for Screen Actors Guild Award winners to thank their peers, but Laura Dern, female supporting actor winner for Marriage Story, had a special reason to do so. Her parents are actors. I literally, literally would not be here if it weren't for actors, so thank you, Bruce Dern and Diane Ladd. <laughs> I gotta add this to my Tinder profile. <laughs> Brad Pitt keeps winning awards for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, here Outstanding Male Supporting Actor, and he keeps using his acceptance speeches to joke about his personal life. Let's be honest, it was a difficult part. A guy who gets high, takes his shirt off, and doesn't get on with his wife. But he also paid tribute to his fellow nominees. So did Joaquin Phoenix, male lead actor winner for Joker. He showered praise on each of the other nominees in his category, then paid tribute to a previous award-winning Joker. Really, I'm standing here on the, the shoulders um, of my favorite actor, uh, Heath Ledger. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me here alongside my extraordinary sisters, whose work touches me so deeply. Judy star Renee Zellweger, the night's female lead actor winner, noted that the woman she played was also a member of the Screen Actors Guild. Judy Garland, uh, 50 years later, your community is thinking of you tonight. Plenty of praise and plaudits, but not many surprises, until the night's final award, Motion Picture Ensemble. Parasite! 
history was made as the South Korean drama Parasite became the first foreign language film ever to win SAG's top honor. Although Parasite, the title is Parasite, I think the story is about coexistence and how we can all live together. Yeah, thank you. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Yeah, big surprise there at the end. A lot yeah. of people have been fascinated by this film, Parasite. I, I was. It's I, just really different, isn't it? It's different. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was pretty good. Have to check it out. Yeah. 527, <laughs> 39 degrees on your Monday morning. And President Donald Trump making a visit to the state capitol. We're going to have more on his trip to Austin. And more on a nonprofit that helps raise money for students competing in the San Antonio Livestock Show. And a rescue caught on camera. A man lucky to be alive after being hit by a boat. We're going to have more on the rescue. Welcome back. It is Monday, January 20th. Yep, 5.30. Thanks for joining us. If you're awake, a lot of people might be sleeping in today. Um, might have the day off. Yes. It, yes, it is the holiday as we honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Traffic expectations today are, Marcus? Should be light, okay. except for around <clears throat> where they have uh, the march and the events afterwards. But other than that, shouldn't be a problem today. And uh, the, the route's pretty much the same this year as it yes. has been in years past, right? So be advised right. of that. Thank you, Marcus. Same you write a check today, by the way, 120-2020. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. It'll happen 12 times this year, but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, good looking day today. I know uh, last week when we were looking forward to today that um, there was that small chance for any rain. That's pretty much out of the picture, and overall it is a nice day. We have got some uh, chilly temperatures, though, a little bit below normal. We're at 39 right now, so a few degrees below, and I think we're going to continue to drop down a few more degrees, and then we'll get back up into about the, say, mid-40s, low to mid-40s, right around 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, 31 right now in comfort. 32 at Bandera and also up the road in Bernie. Mold is on the high side. Mountain Cedar is on the high side. I would suspect that mold is going to be dropping down and Mountain Cedar, my suspicion is that it's going to be going up given the fact that this reading was taken before those winds yesterday. We did have some uh, fairly decent breezes throughout the day yesterday. Temperatures are going to be, again, right around, uh, say, upper 40s or so, mid-upper 40s by 10 o'clock, 54 at noon. So still jacket weather all day long. A couple more clouds going to be moving on in here. 58 for a high temperature today, which is about uh, roughly 5, 6 degrees below normal. But again, overall, a really nice day. We're going to be starting off very nice tomorrow, increasing clouds. Then we have some rain chances right around midweek. And once again, we're looking at a really good weekend. Our streak of great weekends does continue. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So nothing out there this morning. Nothing out there right now, Mike. Things look great as we take a look at the uh, it, the uh, there we go. There. We take a look at Transguide 35 at O'Connor North and southbound lanes. Traffic is uh, starting to increase a little bit on 35, but remember that is a main corridor north and south uh, through the city. So no, not too surprising there, but we do not expect a high volume of traffic we normally have on a regular Monday morning. 35 at 604, no issues there. And Highway 151 at 410, so far everything running smoothly this morning. Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Seven people shot at a Sunday night concert in a downtown bar, two of them dead. This happening at Ventura in the 1000 block of Avenue B. Our Sarah Costa is live at that bar. Now, Sarah, are there any updates about those who were injured? Good morning, Stephanie, and I just spoke to the medical examiner's office maybe about 20 minutes ago, and they said at this time no one else has died from their injuries. So at this time, just two people dead from that shooting last night here at Ventura Bar. They also said the medical examiner's office said that they are not releasing the identities of those two people. We just know that one of the victims was a 21 year old male. This happened around eight o'clock last night at Ventura during a concert. This is on the thousand block of Avenue B when poli uh, police chief William McManus said an argument broke out inside the bar between a group of individuals and one person pulled out a gun and started shooting. One of the victims was a 21 year old male. He was found dead inside the bar. The other victim died outside of the bar from critical injuries. Police say they are unsure if this was a targeted shooting, but the victims were patrons. No one that works at Ventura was shot at or injured. 
Now, our crews did speak with a witness inside of Ventura when that shooting took place. He said multiple shots were fired. He said he didn't get a good look at the shooter, but he did say that the shooter had a pink backpack and police continue to search for that suspect this morning. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. In Fort Worth this morning, two people are dead after a truck they were in crashed into a concrete barrier and plunged into the Trinity River. That truck submerged in about 10 feet of water. A heavy duty tow truck lifted it to higher ground. It was then that the bodies of two adult males, ages 22 and 23, were found inside. Has been determined if the wet weather was a factor in the crash. Police are still investigating. President Trump in Austin this weekend with both supporters and protesters are making their voices heard. The president delivered the keynote speech at the American Farm Bureau Federation's annual convention. KTBC's Natalie Martinez reports. I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state of Texas. Celebrating breakthrough trade deals, President Trump received a warm welcome from Texans at the American Farm Bureau Federation's annual convention. Farmers and ranchers stood behind the president during tense trade negotiations. It's, it's been tough, but it's time to turn, turn a new side, new leaf, and, and see the light at the end of the tunnel. On Wednesday, the president signed a phase one trade agreement with China, ensuring China increases its purchase of U.S. goods and services over the next two years by $200 billion. Most important of all, the deal is enforceable, very, very powerfully enforceable. In fact, it was probably the thing that we negotiated the most. And rest assured, we will vigorously enforce its terms. The deal is heralded by farmers as a win. President Trump told the crowd the ag industry will expect many other wins with the United States-Mexico agreement passing in the Senate. It was a wonderful vote and I sign it very soon. It's being prepared now, beautifully prepared. I'm going to Europe to talk to world leaders and to talk to business people about coming. Everybody wants to come back to America. Profitable promises farmers say they can get behind. The young farmers, uh, it gives them a uh, gives them a chance. Where uh, you know we uh, we work with young farmers, it's tough on them. Along with trade deals, President Trump touched on employment rates and immigration, saying the wall is building rapidly. We're achieving what no administration has ever achieved before. And what do I get out of it? Tell me. I get impeached. That's what I get out of it. <laughs> By these radical left lunatics, I get impeached. But that's okay. The farmers are sticking with Trump. They're sticking with Trump. And again, that was KTBC's Natalie Martinez reporting. A pneumonia outbreak caused by a new strain of coronavirus is spreading across Asia and affecting more people. South Korea has just confirmed its first case of the virus weeks after it was first identified in China. Meanwhile, Chinese officials have confirmed 139 new cases of pneumonia linked to the virus and say a third person has died from it. Now to a terrifying collision caught on camera in Florida. Look at this, a fishing boat barreling over a man on a jet ski at full speed. That man, Mike Higby, on vacation with his family in West Palm Beach. The violent crash leaving him unconscious, face down in the water. But a nearby deckhand rushes to the rescue, jumps on a jet ski of his own, racing over to help pull Higby to shore. The father, too, had a large gash in his forehead, six fractured vertebrae as well. But thanks to the rescuer, he says he is lucky to be alive. Oh my goodness. 537, 39 degrees. And coming up next, the latest on a shooting in Hawaii that left two police officers dead. A later an inside look at what it takes to raise animals and show them at the San Antonio Livestock Show. And taking a look outside with live cam. Pretty shot of downtown San Antonio. It's a cold 39 degrees, but we may have some nice afternoons coming up. We're gonna check in with Mike after the break. Now to the Honolulu, Hawaii area. At least two people are dead, three unaccounted for after a shooting incident over the weekend. As CNN's John Lawrence reports among the missing, the suspect who is accused of setting a fire that destroyed several homes. 
Tragedy in the Aloha State Sunday morning. Two Honolulu police officers killed during an incident in Diamond Head. Our deepest condolences go out to the families of officers Tiffany Enriquez and Kauliki Kalama. The officers were responding to a call from a woman who had been stabbed. I saw this lady sitting down with blood coming out from her uh, leg. Shortly after the police arrived, shots were fired and the officers were struck. The city and county of Honolulu and the people of Oahu, almost a million strong, lost two members of their family. And we're grieving. Police identified the suspect as Jerry Hannell. Authorities say he set fire to a house and the blaze spread to other nearby homes. HPD has opened investigations into two counts of first degree murder, one count of second degree assault, and multiple counts of first degree attempted murder. Hannell and two unidentified females are unaccounted for. We will continue to search for Hannell until we confirm that his remains are recovered. The FBI and the ATF are assisting in the investigation. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. Back here at home on Monday morning, 542, still 39 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to take you behind the scenes of all the hard work it takes for students to compete in the San Antonio Livestock Show. 545 tireless hours of feeding, walking, and cleaning livestock. That's what it takes to raise animals and show them at the San Antonio Livestock Show. Just a couple of weeks, thousands of students will compete to make sales for scholarship money. And the nonprofit Wildfire Texas was started to help raise money for those competing students. Our Sarah Costa spoke with an eighth grader from Spring Branch Middle School whose winning steer was brought by Wildfire at last year's stock show. In Texas, it's probably the biggest pig show, I'd say, and the hardest because you, at major shows, it's so different than your county or local show because you have three seconds to show the judge and you have three seconds to look, make it look presentable. And if you can't do it in that time, then he's not going to see the good parts of the pig. And if you do get it in that time and he likes them, then he's going to choose you and then you have a second chance. But there's no second chance after those three seconds. Toby Alexander has been raising animals for seven years. This year she has seven pigs in two steers. Last year her animals won the San Antonio Stock Show and were purchased by the nonprofit Wildfire Texas. Toby says raising animals is something she wants to do in her future because it's taught her responsibility and values, but most importantly surrounded her with a loving community. Just the people that I've met and the friendships I've come across are so important to me because the people you share your passion with are so different than, you know, the people in just your everyday life. And so it's just the role models I have as adults is so special to me because they're making me who I am today. And I just, I think it's such a special industry that I want to be part of the rest of my life. Toby is grateful for the nonprofit Wildfire Texas for purchasing her award-winning steer last year for $23,000. That will go towards scholarship money she hopes to use at Oklahoma State or Texas Tech to major in agriculture. You can help out students like Toby by donating or contributing to Wildfire Texas. Wildfire will hold its biggest event this Thursday for three nights of entertainment at the San Antonio Rodeo Barbecue Cook-Off event. If you head to KSAT.com, you can find all the information on those tickets that start at $100 to $2,500, and you can also find information on how to donate. For GMSA, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. 547, what do you say we check traffic, see how things are cooking on the roads? Yeah, well, maybe they won't be too bad. Not, not yet. Not too bad at all. As we take a look, you can see no slowdowns. Everything's still in the green. That means that uh, even the normal choke points that we have, uh, just not evident this morning with the lighter traffic flows. Now, let's take a look at Transguide. As we scroll through different Transguide cameras, you can see there are 35 at Evans. North and south on lanes running smoothly right now. No problems here in the downtown area. I-10 at the Y and moving over to 35 at O'Connor. One little vehicle all by itself there off the side, but other than that, really no distractions out there. There's Highway 90 and 36, east and westbound lanes running smoothly. So that's the good news. It's a yes. good day to head to work if you have to work. If you have to work, yeah. <laughs> it's been unusually mild so far in the month of January. Here we are the 20th and a little bit closer to normal, maybe a yeah. smidge below, you said? Yeah, a smidge below and the first 
part of the week, we're going to have high temperatures that will be on the kind of below normal side and then kind of back up to par by the end of the week. So this is sort of going to balance out, almost balance out last week. But this morning we are starting off absolutely fantastic out there. And this was uh, posted a couple of days ago, waiting for that cooler weather. And finally, yes, it started to feel like January this weekend. We had a spectacular weekend and uh, kind of jump ahead to the end of the book. Read the, the end of it. We got a good looking weekend coming up here. Now, in the meantime, uh, great looking days. Sunrise should be spectacular this morning. Just have a couple of clouds out there. And yeah, these are uh, temperatures are on the cold side. So we're about two, three degrees below normal right now. And I think we'll continue to drop down because we do have very, very dry air out there and hardly any wind to deal with. It is either calm or light. A little bit of a breeze up there in New Braunfels. Obviously, we had breezier conditions yesterday. And so I it's got a strange feeling that uh, mountain cedar is going to be going up once the uh, updated count comes out later on this morning. So with the humidity, so we've got clear skies, light wind, dry air. Everything is uh, perfectly in place to have these colder temperatures this morning, and we're going to keep lower humidity throughout the day and throughout the day tomorrow, first half of the day. Then humidity is going to start to come back up. These dew points go back up into the 40s. It's not, you know, sky high, but with all that extra humidity around here, that's going to help out with the cloud cover. So we're not going to have uh, much this morning. A few more clouds later on this afternoon, which this model doesn't pick up too awfully well. And we'll start off with more sunshine tomorrow. Then the clouds really start to thicken up once we get into the afternoon hours tomorrow, tomorrow night, and then go into Wednesday. And that's when we'll start to see some rain around here overnight, tomorrow night into Wednesday. Showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. Storms. A couple of heavier downpours can't be ruled out as well, and it's going to go on through most of the day on Wednesday, especially the first portion of the day. And notice how the majority of this rain is going to be working its way off to the east, and so that's where computer models have the majority of the rain. It's not going to be a huge drought buster, but, and this one just updated itself through Wednesday evening, maybe, you know, an inch and a half of rain. This is kind of broad brush, and obviously some localized heavier downpours here and there, but the majority of it is going to be further down to the southeast, but we'll get some uh, some decent rain around here on uh, on Wednesday. Brutally cold temperatures up there to the north. However, the way the upper level winds are, they're going to be staying up there. We do have a fairly big trough here, and that's what's going to put this across the Great Lakes. But for us, we just have a little bit of a kind of a taste of some of this cooler air which has been moving on in here, and that's going to be the case tomorrow as well. We have another bit of a front moving through late in the uh, the week, and that'll sort of get us back down to almost normal temperatures, but most all the really, really cold stuff is going to be staying up there to the north of us, and we'll have, like I said, temperatures at or a little bit below normal on average throughout the rest of the week. 54 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a few extra clouds later on today, but still a good looking day, 58 degrees. And for the window of the, the March this morning, basically, it's gonna be kind of jacket weather. So only roughly mid fifties up through uh, noon. Now, tomorrow we start off chilly again, and then once again, stay slightly below normal. Increasing clouds throughout the day, chance of rain tomorrow night, and then a good portion of the day on Wednesday. Thursday will start to clear on out. 65 and stay right around low to mid 60s in through the weekend. And overall, other than a few extra clouds, once again, how many weekends in a row has it been? They've been fantastic. And this is looking like a good weekend setting up. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. Thank you, Mike. Well, Prince Harry right now is finally speaking out about the break from the royal family. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the Duke of Sussex has made his first public statement on that matter. Prince Harry is breaking away from Buckingham Palace. It brings me great sadness that it has come to this. Harry and his wife Meghan are dropping their royal titles and will no longer represent the Queen as working members of the royal family. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. Earlier this month, the couple made the announcement that they plan to ease up on their roles as senior members of the royal family, splitting their time between the UK and North America. Our hope was to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth and my military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. Despite the split, the Queen says Harry, Meghan and their son Archie will always be much loved members of the royal family. Harry feels the same. I will always have the utmost respect for my grandmother, my commander in chief, and I'm incredibly grateful to her and the rest of my family for the support they have shown Meghan and I over the last few months. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News.
I read a report last night online that said this arrangement, despite all the mm -hmm. hoopla and the drama, may be only semi-permanent. They're talking about they're going to revisit all of this in one year's time. Oh, one year? So yeah. oh, it'll be interesting to see how everything turns out. Yes, and apparently uh, Harry and Me Megan are uh, talking about buying a multi-million dollar home in Vancouver, Canada. Definitely different. High 53, 39 degrees. And Texas now holds the world record for making the largest Snickers bar ever. Ooh, just in time for Valentine's Day. We're going to tell you about that next. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 989, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 7311, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 6, 14, 19, 27, 33. And your lotto, Texas, 17, 20, 27, 33, 35, 45. And your Powerball numbers, we have 20, 24, 38, 56, 68, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. This weekend, a Guinness World Record was broken in Central Texas. At the Mars Chocolate Factory in Waco, they broke the world record for the largest Snickers ever, ever made. All they had to do was create a bar larger than 4 feet, 220 pounds, so they made a bar that weighed at 4,782 pounds, 12 feet long, 24 inches tall, and 26 inches wide. To put that in perspective, the chocolate bar weighs more than a car and is nearly as long as a pickup truck. Ah, only in Texas. Right now, a little less than three till. Still to come, you expect jet lag if you're flying, but did you know your body can feel the effects of jet lag without stepping foot on a plane? What you need to know about metabolic jet lag. Take a look at Trans Guide on this MLK day. We are expecting lighter traffic. We'll see if that's the case heading into the 6 to 7 o'clock hour. Two people dead, five others injured at a shooting at a concert Ventura Bar in downtown San Antonio last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, hear from Police Chief William McManus about what he has to say about this fatal shooting. Outside with live cam today, the big MLK March here in San Antonio, Texas. Tens of thousands of people expected. What's the weather going to be like? Mike is standing by. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 20th, MLK Day. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks for joining us this morning. A cool start to your morning at 40 degrees. It's chilly out there. Hey, a reminder, there are closures today in observance of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. City Hall and most municipal offices, rather, will be closed in observance, uh, but public safety and emergency services will remain open. We have a complete list of all the closures on KSAT.com. And if you are headed out to the march today, we're going to check in with Mike to see, you know, how many layers you should be wearing. Uh, I would wear a couple of good layers this morning because it is definitely on the chilly side. As a matter of fact, temperatures are slightly below normal right now. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. It's going to be a gorgeous sunrise, and today is really shaping up to be a very, very nice day. Let's see. Why is my clicker not clicking? There we go. Uh, temperature right now, uh, we are at 40, so we went up one degree just in the past hour. 32, Bernie, and uh, some freezing temperatures out there in parts of the hill country. Yeah, for some reason, we went up a degree, but we still have um, very, very dry air, clear skies, and light wind. So I think we'll continue to drop down maybe in the next uh, hour, hour and a half or so. And as far as the allergens are concerned, mold is on the high side. This was from yesterday's reading, but with the dry air that moved in yesterday and this morning, I have a feeling that would be dropping down. But this number given the fact that the winds were up yesterday. I have a feeling that may be a little bit on the higher side. Now, as far as temperatures, I think we'll be dropping down, like I said, a couple more degrees right around, say, mid-30s. Obviously, some freezing temperatures in the Hill Country. And as you can see throughout the rest of today and the morning, especially, we're going to be staying in through the 40s, getting up to the low 50s by about noon. So definitely jacket weather, but we are going to have a lot of sunshine and a couple more clouds then later on this afternoon. Overall, though, a nice looking day, and we will make it into the upper 50s for high temperatures. So just a little bit on the below normal side. Roughly the same situation tomorrow than Wednesday, actually late tomorrow night and Wednesday. Pretty good chance for some rain. We'll talk about that and take a look at the upcoming weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo and as we would expect on holiday, Probably not much out there, right? Well, there wasn't much out there until our last break. Uh, just coming in, we do have an accident southbound 35. It's going to be between that 410 West cutoff 
and Samsey. So we're going to zoom in more specifically to that area between Eisenhower and Ritterman on those southbound main lanes. And that's where we have that accident currently in the clearing stages. Now we have a number of officers out there to slow the few folks down that are out there on the roadways. Just remember, slow down 20 miles an hour below the speed limit or vacate to the next available lane for those flashing lights. Now let's take a look outside through Transguide 35 at O'Connor, which is just north of that accident. You can see north and southbound lanes in this part of the town still running smoothly at this point. Mark. Thank you, Mark. It's developing now. San Antonio police continue their search this morning for a person who shot up a downtown bar during a concert last night. Two people were killed. Five others hurt during that shooting at the Ventura on Avenue B. Sarah Costa is live on scene. Sarah, do we have the identities of those who lost their lives yet? Good morning, Mark. As of this time, I spoke with the medical examiner at five o'clock this morning and they said they are not releasing any information about those that were that were killed in this shooting last night, except that one of them was a 21 year old male. They also said that the five others that were injured during the shooting, no one else has died from those injuries. This happened around eight o'clock last night at Ventura Bar, which is downtown on the thousand block of Avenue B that killed two people and injured five others. Police Chief Lloyd McManus says they are still investigating using video surveillance from inside the bar during that shooting, but he tells us what they know so far about the fatal shooting. There was an altercation between a group or individuals. One person at least pulled out a gun, started shooting. Don't know if, that, if it was at a specific individual or just shooting indiscriminately. That 21 year old male who was shot dead, he was found inside the club. The other victim died outside the club from critical injuries is happening during a concert last night. Our crews did speak with a witness who was inside of that concert when that shooting happened. He said he heard multiple shots fired. He also said that he didn't get a good look at the suspect that was sh sh that, that shooting suspect, but he said he did see the suspect was wearing a pink backpack and you'll hear from that witness coming up and GMSA at 630 as he describes the chaotic scene that went on when those shots rang out live from downtown. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. 605 right now. Other stories we're following for you this morning. At least two people are dead. 15 others hurt after a shooting in Kansas City. Officers arrived to a chaotic scene outside a crowded bar where they say one adult female was shot and killed in the parking lot. Up to 15 people took themselves to area hospitals, three of them currently in critical condition. The shooter dead after armed security from the bar stopped the shooter. No shots were fired by any of the officers. Police say they do know the suspect, do not know rather, why the suspect did all of this. In national news this morning, law enforcement officials in Virginia are preparing for a possible large-scale rally against several proposed gun control bills. After learning the crowds will likely include extremist groups, Virginia's governor issued a state of emergency. CNN's Whitney Wilde is tracking the latest. I think it's overkill at a certain level. I accept it's better to be prepared, but this is clearly beyond being prepared. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam has declared a state of emergency ahead of a rally at the state capitol. Northam says law enforcement believes extremists, including people from outside Virginia, plan to flood Richmond protesting proposed gun control measures. We're seeing threats of armed confrontation and assault on our capitol. Monday's MLK holiday also coincides with Lobby Day, a chance for Virginians to advocate for themselves. Northam stressed the event is normally peaceful, but worries about a return to the violence in Charlottesville in 2017. Violence will not be tolerated. And if that is your group or your intention on Monday, then you're not welcome. Second Amendment advocates insist they're headed to the Capitol to simply exercise their First Amendment rights peacefully. I just hope that people just truly understand that, that Virginia gun owners are peaceful people. We've peacefully demonstrated this is not this just didn't start today. The proposals at the now democratically controlled legislature include a ban on transporting and possessing an assault weapon and wider background checks. The proposals prompted some localities to declare themselves Second Amendment sanctuaries where officials say they won't enforce certain laws if passed. In Richmond, Virginia, I'm Whitney Wild. Right now, 607, 40 degrees. And still to come, three airports here in the U.S. greeting passengers after fears about a new virus spreading in China. 
That's ahead in your GMA first look. When it comes to eating, it's easy to keep a schedule during the week, but what happens when Saturday rolls around? After the break, we're talking about metabolic jet lag. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a cold 40 degrees. A lot of people gearing up for today's MLK Junior March. And uh, we're going to have a live report later in the newscast. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome back. It is 611. City Hall and most municipal officers are closed today. And it's for a good reason. Today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And San Antonio has the largest march in the entire country set to start yet again this morning. Our Max Massey joins us live at Pittman Sullivan Park, where the march is scheduled to wrap up today. Now, Max, how does it look out there right now? Good morning, guys. It is calm, cold, and quiet. Calm, calm, calm cold and quiet. Sorry, my mouth is so cold, I'm losing feeling. But the only thing we're hearing right now is actually the food trucks right behind us. They just turned on their vehicles. Not many people here just yet, but the tents are out. People are getting ready to start the day. Everything's set to take place at 10 a.m. and it is just under three miles. It begins at MLK Academy, ends here at Pittman Sullivan Park at 1101 Iowa. Motorcycles, cars, and vehicles not allowed in the march. And if you need a ride to get here, don't worry, VIA has you covered. They are operating a special event park and ride service. You're gonna be dropped off on MLK Drive. You can get free services from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the two locations that you're seeing on your screen right now. The Freeman Coliseum, that's 3201 East Houston, and Phillips College, 1801 MLK Drive. As for the festivities today, like we said, it is calm, cold, and quiet right in here. But at 8 a.m., everything is set to start up a little bit. It's kind of that pre-March festivities. There's going to be a worship. There's going to be music. There's going to be dancing. A lot going on, and we're going to be here live all morning long. Mark, Stephanie? Thank, Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. More coverage to come right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. And when you think of jet lag, you think of traveling. That's right. Whether it's from L.A. to Miami, New York to Paris, that time change can throw off the entire body clock, causing poor sleep, daytime fatigue, problems with your stomach. But traveling is not the only way to cause those conditions. As our Devin Clark explains, you can feel the same effects just by when you eat. Breakfast at 7, lunch at noon, dinner at 6. It's easy to keep the schedule during the week, but then comes the weekend. You have brunch around 3, and then you just have some, like, you know, veggies or something at night, or a little cheese, you know, crackers. 10 o'clock. I ate with him, <laughs> but I usually eat breakfast at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. A recent study found changing your eating schedule on the weekends can cause your body clock to get out of whack and cause metabolic jet lag. That's got something to do with flying, don't it? Experts found that on the weekends, people wake up later, start eating later, and they eat for longer periods of time, literally throwing their body into jet lag. And it comes with some serious health consequences like diabetes, obesity, and high blood sugar. So if those late night cravings do show up, try your best to resist the sugary snacks and go for healthier options. Things like popcorn, fruit, and nuts. Reporting for GMSA, I'm Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. 614. And it might be a little light today as far as traffic goes. How's it looking right now? Not too bad, despite that uh, one major accident that we do have. So uh, that's uh, kind of an anomaly. So it's not because we have too many vehicles out there. Let's take a look at this accident. We're moving up to 35, the southbound lanes between 410 and the uh, hospital there at Bamsey. Southbound 35 between Eisenhower and Ritterman. More specifically, that's where that accident currently is in the clearing stages. Now let's take a look at uh, I-10 to Y so far, no issues there. 37 at Carolina, north and south on lanes, running smoothly at this point, and we're moving over here to Highway 90 at South Samoa. Things are very busy, both in the eastbound and the westbound lanes, all the way through Highway 90 at Couples. Then take a look, 1604 at Stone Oak. Few folks out there on the roadway, really not too bad. And then at the interchange for 410 and I-10 there, from that 410 and Crossroads, or I-10 and Crossroads camera, you can see Traffic not uh, too bad out there for this early in the morning, but then again, we did expect lighter traffic than normal for a Monday morning. Thank you, Marcus. Walked out to the truck this morning. Got to be totally honest. Had yeah. one jacket on, walked outside, walked back. Nope, got to go get <laughs> got to go get a different one now. Aww. Yeah, don't think, because it's going to be one yes. of those where it just stays kind of cool, mm -hmm. you know, 40s, right around low 50s. Mm -hmm. 
even though there's going to be some sunshine this morning, you, yes. you stand out there long enough in that. So I'm kind of surprised at Max. He's a Philly boy. He's from up north, and he's that cold this morning. Yeah, he so. gets cold. How long cold. has he been down here, though? He, he enjoys his... Has he become acclimated to Texas, <laughs> yes. is your point? Uh, I was right. going to anyway, say he is, uh, here's he a, prefers boy. the warm weather. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome skies. This picture from over the weekend. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And that's the way the day is going to be starting off. And we'll have a couple of clouds. We're not seeing any uh, any sort of glow yet. We're still uh, well, about an hour and 15 minutes away from the sunrise. So I guess it's not showing up as of yet. 32 right now in Rio Medina. It did drop down a little bit. Same thing, uh, Bernie. A lot of freezing temperatures going out toward the hill country. 38 Balverde. We went up a degree for some reason out there at the airport between uh, you know, the five o'clock hour and six o'clock. But we did uh, dip down right around 38 uh, in the five o'clock hour, went up two degrees. And I think we'll still drop down maybe a couple of more notches this morning. A lot of freezing readings out there in the hill country. But again, these numbers really aren't that far from their respected normals. Our normal low temperature right now in town is 41 degrees. And the reason why we did cool down, we obviously had that dry air move in yesterday. You could kind of feel how dry the air was and clear skies, light wind, lighter no wind out there, and that's why it is fairly chilly this morning. Humidity is going to remain on the low side. Dew points will stay right around the 20s throughout the day today, as well as most of the day tomorrow. Then we'll start to see the humidity and the dew points come up as we go into Wednesday, and that's going to help with cloud cover. That's going to help with the showers around here. So we may have a couple of clouds later on this afternoon, and then tomorrow we're going to start off with a lot more uh, sunshine, and then the clouds are definitely going to be thickening up throughout the day, and then we get some uh, rain to move on in here, and that's going to be overnight tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. Showers, even a couple of thunderstorms, perhaps a couple of moderate downpours as well. That will continue through much of the day on Wednesday and then start to taper off by uh, late Wednesday and Thursday. We'll just have to Think about clearing out some of the clouds as far as rainfall totals and this computer model pretty much has everything. The majority of the rain in the southeastern half of our viewing area, I mean, nine tenths of an inch of rain uh, estimates out there in parts of the hill country. Not bad, but we're looking an inch, inch and a half and two inches down there along the coast. And then obviously you get one of those stronger thunderstorms or uh, some heavier downpours could have some localized heavier amounts than that. So overall, we're looking at an inch to two inches of rain kind of as a rule of thumb as it looks right now over the next few days. Brutally cold temperatures up there to the north. However, the way the upper level steering winds are, that's all going to be staying up there. This batch of very cold air is going to just be pushed off to the northeast and we're going to be staying on the coolish side for the next couple of days in through Wednesday. Then we start to warm up just a little bit, but it's not as though there's going to be any huge heat wave around here. It'll just get temperatures kind of back up to normal readings right around low, almost mid 60s going and toward the weekend. So 54 today at noon. Again, a good looking day. A couple of clouds out there. Wind out of the uh, east, southeast, about five to 10 miles per hour. 58 for high temperature today. So especially if you're in the shadows, you want to keep a jacket handy. And then tomorrow is going to start off very cold again and stay on the cooler side. Plus, we're going to have more clouds in the afternoon, so it'll feel cooler with uh, not as much sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow. Rain tomorrow night into Wednesday. Throughout most of the day on Wednesday, it looks like it is going to be kind of on the uh, the soggy side, and then we'll start to clear out and pretty much normal readings for the most part Thursday through the weekend. Not too bad. Mm -mm. No complaints for me. Thank you, Mike. Nor, nor from me. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 619, 40 degrees. Say nobody cared if you complain. No. <laughs> what did you say? Nobody care if you complain. No. Oh, that's not true. Oh, what did Marcus on? I am so. so I am not buying you breakfast. Uh oh. For the next. You're in trouble now. 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. Wow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> And just ahead, think your kids spend too much time playing video games? You're not alone. We have the results of a new study in your Morning Consumer News. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Whether your beauty routine is three steps or 57, make Nature's Bounty Hair, Skin, and Nails Step 1. It's the number one brand uniquely formulated for silky hair, glowing skin, and healthy nails. Nature's Bounty, because you're better off healthy. 
When life changes, so do your taxes. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt. Our tax returns come with a free lifetime accuracy guarantee. Life may change. Your lifetime accuracy guarantee won't. Tax prep guaranteed at Jackson Hewitt. (laughs) Big thing I recently learned as a parent? Baby's skin is absorbent. Her skin can actually soak up wetness. Her diaper doesn't. That's gross. That's why I use Pampers. Pampers absorbs quickly to trap and lock wetness away, keeping your baby's skin drier and healthier. For a diaper that stays drier, count on Pampers. The health of your baby's skin starts with the Pampers they're in. In this morning's GMA First Look, three major airports on alert for a deadly virus. They told us to stay in the plane for like a couple more minutes, and then we went down to take the temperature and I gave them the form. Here in America, the CDC sending about 100 employees to JFK, LAX, and SFO to take temperatures and check for symptoms of the coronavirus, which can at first look like the common cold, flu, or even pneumonia. After Chinese health officials reveal they've identified more than 200 cases of the so-called coronavirus that has already killed three people in Asia. At least eight are hospitalized in serious condition. I think it could probably possibly easily spread. There are a lot of people going back and forth, especially with Chinese New Year. So how dangerous is this virus? Coming up at 7 a.m., our Dr. Jennifer Ashton is live in Times Square with everything you need to know. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, nearly 90% of parents think their kids spend too much time gaming. According to a new poll, most parents think kids play too much. Nearly half worry it gets in the way of sleep, homework, and even friendships. I'm in that list. TikTok beat out Facebook and Instagram for the most app downloads in 2019. TikTok clocked in with more than 700 million downloads last year. Unfortunately for the video platform, what app still reigned supreme with 850 million downloads. Instagram making a change to its interface, reportedly doing away with the IGTV button. The iCod would launch Instagram's long form videos. Users will now uh, get long form videos within their feed, search tab and profile. So a report says very few people were using the standalone app. Interesting. I didn't use it. <laughs> I didn't either. Yeah. 625, 40 degrees for now. Here's what's coming up next half hour. After hundreds of hours of raising their animals, students get ready to compete in the San Antonio Livestock Show. Coming up on GMSA, why one nonprofit says it's crucial to support those hardworking students. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker fell to fifth place, but $8.4 million gave the blockbuster a domestic total of $494 million. Jumanji The Next Level took fourth place with $9.6 million. It's at $273 million domestic. 1917 fell from first to third, but the Golden Globe and Producers Guild winner made $22.1 million. We've no choice but to embark on this perilous journey. Doolittle managed a second place debut, but its opening weekend gross of $22.5 million was at the low end of expectations. Put your seatbelt on. Yeah, that's how we do it now. Bad Boys for Life dominated in its debut. The long awaited action threequel overwhelmed expectations, opening on top with $59.2 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Police continue to search this morning for the suspect responsible for a shooting at a concert last night at a downtown bar, ultimately killing two people and injuring five others. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta, here from a witness who describes the panic that went on inside. More than 300,000 people, that's how many are expected to take part in the MLK March happening later this morning. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. It is calm, cold, and quiet right now, but at 8 a.m., things are going to get started to pick up. We're going to have a full preview of what you can expect throughout the day and a full look at what's going on. And today, many places will be closed in observance of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. City Hall and most municipal offices will be closed today, but public safety and emergency service will remain open. We have a complete list of all the closures on KSET.com. And good morning to you. Welcome back 630 on your Monday. It is January 20th and Marcus is here with Time Saver Traffic.
And it looks like we've cleared up that major accident that we had southbound 35 between uh, Riddiman and Eisenhower on the southbound lane. So that's no longer an issue. And right now, no other issues. No other issues. Good news. While, while we've got Marcus here at the dash, I should tell you that the men of GMSA got together and checked out the movie 1917 yes. over the weekend. Uh, it's my second viewing. You guys? Earth viewing? Yes. Uh, I it. plan on taking my son to see it. You really liked it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, and from a... Uh, standpoint of just the way the movie was made and everything I, I almost say it doesn't give you a chance to really kind of sit back and catch your breath right because it starts and doesn't stop you know there's no real lull point but and they have literally if you've read about it like yes. seven eight minute long takes mm -hmm. one solid the very first shot lasts seven minutes uninterrupted right. and think about the number of uh, people in it, and they mm -hmm. said they had to have it perfectly, or else they have to start from the beginning. And right. they did. The director talking yeah. about the mm -hmm. having to, to do that a couple of times. And it's walking down one of the trenches back in World War. It was amazing how it was shot. Well, there were like six or seven of us at the movie Saturday, and I think it was six or seven thumbs up. Oh, yes. yeah. Very good. Well, I look forward to it. I haven't seen it yet. I think like directing, cinematography, yeah. uh, sound, perhaps editing. costume. Wow. Um, and some the, amazing performances yeah. from some very young actors. Uh -huh. Look forward to it. All right, back to the weather now. Uh, it's a beautiful day. We've got a couple of clouds out there right now. It is cold, though. Make sure you grab a jacket before you head out the door, but it's going to be fantastic. Uh, well, no problems if you do have to go to uh, work this morning or if you are heading off to the uh, march. It's going to be just a great day for it, but it is definitely going to be cold, so maybe a couple of extra layers. 40 here in town, freezing out uh, portions of the hill country. 35 Port SA and 39 right now at Randolph. And we've got very dry air out there now. Mountain Cedar. Pro my guess would be it's going to be going up when the updated count comes out in about a half an hour just because we had those windy conditions yesterday. Mold should be dropping down given the fact we had such dry air around here yesterday as well as today. Now, as far as uh, this morning, again, mostly clear, cold, partly cloudy this afternoon. So just one or two clouds. We have a couple of clouds out there right now. Upper 50s, so good looking day, but still jacket weather all day long. Pretty much the same thing tomorrow, except the clouds will definitely thicken up in the afternoon and then going into uh, tomorrow night. We'll have a lot more clouds around here and some rain on Wednesday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, mid 50s. Then after that, going Thursday in through the weekend looks very nice. So we'll start off kind of cool the first part of the week and then back to about normal temperatures uh, the latter part of the week going into the weekend. Looks like once again, we're going to have a great looking weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So we had that one incident earlier this morning and and that has cleared up. up. Okay. So as we take a look at the uh, map, uh, we see a little bit of a slowdown on uh, Highway 16. That's been there road out there by 1604, but really nothing in the way of slowdowns as we take a look at the map. So things are looking great out there. Let's move over to Trans Guide. Right now, 35, 604 up on the northeast side. No delays on north and southbound lanes of 35 or the east or westbound lanes of 1604. Now, Highway 98 Military getting a few more vehicles out there in the roadway here in the downtown vicinity, 37 Carolina, but currently no delays in anyone's travel times. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. Developing now, a shooter opening fire at a concert last night at a downtown San Antonio bar has left two people dead, five others sent to the hospital. The story making national headlines this morning. The fatal shooting happening at the Ventura at 1000 Avenue B. Our Sarah Costa live down there near the bar. And Sarah, Sarah uh, sorry, uh, my apologies this morning. Top story, was this a targeted shooting? Do we know the answer to that question yet? Good morning, Mark, and that is the question that San Antonio police are trying to figure out this morning. If this was indeed a targeted shooting or if that shooter was shooting at the crowd indiscriminately. San Antonio Police Chief Floyd McManus says it started around 8 o'clock last night during a concert at Ventura, which is a bar downtown in the thousand block of Avenue B. Chief, police chief says that's when the what they know so far is that at that time is that the shooter got into an argument with a group of people inside the bar around eight o'clock and pulled out a gun, ultimately shooting seven people, killing two of them. We spoke with a witness who says he was inside the bar when he heard multiple shots fired. He described it as extremely chaotic. He says people were spilling their drinks and the floor was slippery, making it very difficult to run away. So when we were running, people were just piling on each other trying to get to that one door because it's a really small environment in there. It's not like a really big bar where there's multiple exits, just two of them in there in the back. 
One of the victims killed was a 21 year old man who was found dead inside the club. The other victim died outside of the club from critical injuries. Police say they continue to search for the shooter this morning. They have video surveillance that they are using for that investigation. Police Chief McManus says they have a good description of the shooter and he feels confident they will be able to identify that suspect in the near future. When we spoke to that witness, he said he didn't get a good look at the shooter, but he said he saw from saw him from the back and saw him or her from the back and that suspect was carrying a pink backpack. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. That story will continue to develop throughout the coming days. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio has the largest MLK march in the country and preparations are still getting getting rather underway. Our Max Massey joins us live from Pittman Sullivan Park and Max, how's it looking out there? Good morning, guys. Not too much going on right now. The vendors and the food trucks are here. They are ramping everything up. And if you look way behind me, you can see the stage getting ready. It's already set up for today's big events set for later this morning. So let's take a look at video from last year. Now, Reverend Dr. Raymond Calley Sr. began the city of San Antonio's MLK March back in 1968. He wanted to call attention to the need for basic infrastructure here on the city's east side. The MLK Junior Commission and the city of San Antonio held the first official MLK March on January 19th, 1987. So let's take a look at the logistics for later this morning. Now, the walk, the march, is just under three miles. It begins at MLK Academy, ends here at Pittman Sullivan Park, that's 1101 Iowa, and motorcycles, cars, and vehicles not allowed in the march. And if you do need a ride to get here, don't worry, VIA has you covered. They are operating a special event park and ride service. You're gonna get dropped off at MLK Drive, and you can get these free services from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at two locations, the ones right on your screen right now, the Freeman Coliseum, 3201 East Houston and Phillips College 1801 MLK Boulevard. Now guys, we said it earlier, we are expecting a lot of people, more than 300,000 people taking place in the march today. Now, like we said, the march starts at 10 a.m., but 8 a.m., there's going to be a pre-march festivity set up. There's gonna be a worship, there's gonna be music, there's gonna be dancing. We are excited. We're gonna be here live all morning long, bringing it to you. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Max. And right now on our website, everything you need to know about the MLK March, it's all on kset.com. Just look for this story on our homepage. Topping other morning headlines, President Trump was in Austin yesterday. Both the supporters and protesters made their voices heard. As KTBC's Natalie Martinez reports, the president delivered the keynote speech from the American Farm Bureau Federation's annual convention. I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state of Texas. Celebrating breakthrough trade deals, President Trump received a warm welcome from Texans at the American Farm Bureau Federation's annual convention. Farmers and ranchers stood behind the president during tense trade negotiations. It's, it's been tough, but it's time to turn, turn a new side, new leaf, and, and see the light at the end of the tunnel. On Wednesday, the president signed a phase one trade agreement with China, ensuring China increases its purchase of U.S. goods and services over the next two years by $200 billion. Most important of all, the deal is enforceable, very, very powerfully enforceable. In fact, it was probably the thing that we negotiated the most. And rest assured, we will vigorously enforce its terms. The deal is heralded by farmers as a win. President Trump told the crowd the ag industry will expect many other wins with the United States-Mexico agreement passing in the Senate. It was a wonderful vote and I sign it very soon. It's being prepared now, beautifully prepared. I'm going to Europe to talk to world leaders and to talk to business people about coming. Everybody wants to come back to America. Profitable promises farmers say they can get behind. The young farmers, uh, it gives them a uh, gives them a chance. Where um, you know we uh, we work with young farmers, it's tough for them. Along with trade deals, President Trump touched on employment rates and immigration, saying the wall is building rapidly. We're achieving what no administration has ever achieved before. And what do I get out of it? Tell me. I get impeached, that's what I get out of it. <laughs> By these radical left lunatics, I get impeached. But that's okay, the farmers are sticking with Trump. They're sticking with Trump. 
Natalie Martinez reporting. Hey, it's 640, 40 degrees. And after the break, how you can help some of the kids participating in the stock show and rodeo. That's coming up. Welcome back, everyone. As we continue monitoring the roadways, that's I-10 at Frio here in the downtown vicinity. I-10 at 1604, also looking pretty good. Let's move over. Highway 90 to Santa Mora. East and westbound lanes are definitely picking up in volume. However, no delays in anyone's travel time, so things look great all the way through Highway 90 at Couples. Even Highway 90 at 36th Street looks pretty good. 35 at Evans up there on the northeast side. North and southbound lanes still running smoothly, so all in all, if uh, you do have to venture out this morning and head to work, then you should have no delays, no problems getting there this morning. Good news for your traffic commute. Thank you, Marcus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good looking day today overall. We've got a couple of extra clouds uh, later on this morning or later on this afternoon, I should say, but uh, cold this morning, mm -hmm. not normal rings, heading out, lots of layers. Very gotcha. good idea. Gotta love a sunset. Yes, indeed. This is from a couple of days ago, but beautiful. And sunset tonight should be pretty nice as well. We will have a couple of extra clouds hanging around here. Speaking of ah, the sun, look at that beautiful sunrise that is starting. Got a couple of clouds hanging around out there, but wow. It's going to be gorgeous. 40 here in town. Uh, a lot of freezing temperatures now down to 29 in Kerrville. 40 Bulverde, 44 up the road in Canyon Lake and 37 in Castroville. Not anything overly extreme. I mean, that would be, I guess, the, the most extreme there is right now. Kerrville at uh, 29, but here in town, that's we're roughly at a normal low temperature. Normal low being 41 degrees right now. The reason for it is mostly clear skies, dry air, light wind, maybe a puff of a breeze. So uh, there's a bit of a wind chill in places this morning. So just overall, it's like I said, bundle up if you're heading out. 25 degrees, or excuse me, the dew point is 25 in Hondo. Same thing, uh, San Antonio is at 24. So this very dry air is going to be sticking around for uh, pretty much all day long and as well as tomorrow morning. Then we're really going to start to get the flow, the return flow off the Gulf of Mexico. And so that's going to put the dew points up. That's going to help with the cloud cover starting late tomorrow, tomorrow night into Wednesday and then also that's going to help with the rain chances and we got some pretty good rain chances as is looking at right now. A few clouds around today. That'll be pretty much about it starting off tomorrow. Then late in the day tomorrow clouds really start to thicken up and tomorrow night and this computer model is getting a little bit more aggressive with some of the uh, the rain and that's going to be tomorrow night into Wednesday morning and then throughout the day on Wednesday and then that will all shift off to the east and we'll start off with a couple of clouds on Thursday and then begin to clear out now rainfall totals and again it really depends on where you are because it looks like northwest portions of the hill country are not going to see as much but the lion's share of it is going to be down to the southeast of us, Beeville, down toward Corpus Christi, but elsewhere, call it uh, an inch of rain on average, maybe a little bit more. And of course, if there's any any heavier downpours, localized might be a bit more than that. Up around the, uh, the Great Lakes last week, there were lots of cancellations in Chicago because of all the heavy, heavy snow. Now, most of that has ended. A lot of this is just, as you can see, the lake effect snow coming in here off the open waters of the Great Lakes. Then they've got that, and then they've got really cold temperatures to deal with, 26 degrees below in International Falls. But all that brutally cold stuff is going to be staying up there to the north of us. So, yes, we are going to be on the below normal side this week excuse me, first half of the week, but not anything just ridiculously cold at all. 54 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and later on this afternoon, call it partly cloudy, 58, so still jacket weather throughout the day. Tomorrow we start off, it's going to be about like today as far as temperatures, uh, upper 30s, maybe 40-ish freezing temperatures in the hill country and more sunshine to start the day and then the clouds are going to increase and then Wednesday late Tuesday Wednesday good chance for some rain a couple of heavier downpours can be expected and then we'll sort of get back up to roughly normal temperatures on average Thursday through the weekend but a nice weekend yeah and great day today too awesome Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 648, 40 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, important news as you crawl out of bed. Did you know the way you lay at night affects your health during the day? What experts say you should know. Outside with live cam. Time saver traffic coming up. One last look at weather with Mike before we wrap up and the news you need to know before you go.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we have the very latest on the impeachment showdown. President Trump revealing his legal team and their strategy. And we have everything that you need to know right here on GMA. Two people dead and five others injured after a shooter opened fire at a concert last night at a downtown bar. Good morning. I'm Sarah Acosta. This happening after eight o'clock last night at Ventura, which is downtown the thousand block of Avenue B. Police Chief William McManus says an argument broke out inside the bar during a concert between a group of individuals and one person pulled out a gun and started shooting. One of the victims killed was a 21 year old male. He was found dead inside the bar. The other victim died outside of the club from critical injuries. Police say they are unsure if this was a targeted shooting, but the victims were patrons. No one that works at the bar was shot at or injured. Police continue to search for that suspect this morning. We spoke with one witness who was inside that concert when that shooting happened. He said multiple shots were fired and he also describes how chaotic the scene was when everyone was trying to run out. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. We are still getting ready for the biggest, largest MLK march in the entire country. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Just behind us, we see the vendors, the food trucks, and the stage getting set for at least 300,000 people who are going to take part in the walk on the east side later today. The march set to start at 10 a.m., just under three miles. It begins at MLK Academy, ends at Pittman Sullivan Park, 1101 Iowa. That's where we're standing right now. Motorcycles, cars, vehicles not allowed in the MLK march. And if you need a ride to get here via operating a special event park and ride service. You're going to get dropped off on MLK Drive and you can get these free, yes, free services from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Two locations that you can participate in. They're on your screen right now. The Freeman Coliseum 3201 East Houston and Phillips College 1801 MLK Drive. Like we said, the march is set to start at 10 o'clock this morning, but 8 a.m. there's going to be a pre-march worship. There's also going to be music. There's going to be dancing. A lot going on this morning. We're going to be live here throughout the morning, throughout the afternoon, so make sure to stay with KSAT through the day. Reporting on the east side, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Tragedy in the Aloha State Sunday morning. Two Honolulu police officers killed during an incident in Diamond Head. Our deepest condolences go out to the families of officers Tiffany Enriquez and Kaoliki Kalama. The officers were responding to a call from a woman who had been stabbed. I saw this lady sitting down with blood coming out from her uh, leg. Shortly after the police arrived, shots were fired and the officers were struck. The city and county of Honolulu and the people of Oahu, almost a million strong, lost two members of their family. And we're grieving. Police identified the suspect as Jerry Hannell. Authorities say he set fire to a house and the blaze spread to other nearby homes. HPD has opened investigations into two counts of first degree murder, one count of second degree assault, and multiple counts of first degree attempted murder. Hannell and two unidentified females are unaccounted for. We will continue to search for Hannell until we confirm that his remains are recovered. The FBI and the ATF are assisting in the investigation. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. Right now, as we take a look at the roadway, 1604 at Kulota, there's a welcome sight on a Monday morning. No lines, no waiting for that exit ramp uh, to eastbound Highway 151. As we look at some other areas, you can see I-10, 1604 looking pretty good with no problems there. I-10 and Frio for the inbound or the outbound lanes. Mike? This is how the day is starting off. Uh, lots of uh, clear skies out there. Cold temperatures, though, so make sure you do bundle up. We're going to be up to 80, excuse me, 85, 58 today. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Make it a great day. Good morning, America is next. Thanks for joining us.